the concepts of producer and consumer surplus to analyze the consequences of a country opening up a market to exports. So we start with the situation in autarky when there's no trade, where supply equal to the demand at price P0, that's the price that will equate marginal cost of domestic production and the marginal benefit of domestic consumption, standard supply and demand graph. If we have the opportunity to export, let's imagine you know, what, what price would result in exports actually leaving the country. So you have two prices, PW1 and PW2, so these uh, two possible international prices. It's going to be the case that firms would be willing to go to all the trouble to export, to go through the customs hassles, the uh, difficulty of finding consumers abroad, the difficulty of new language, only if the price abroad was better than the price at home. So the PW1 has got to be greater than the autarky price in order for firms to, to go to all this trouble. So in any graph that you're doing analyzing exports, be sure that the world price exceeds where the price where supply and demand curve meet. A price like PW2 is going to be a situation where the country imports the product. So let's imagine what would happen if the price of this product goes up. So the price is going to go from P0 to PW1. Now two things to keep in mind. The increase in opportunities to sell abroad is going to tend to bid up the price inside the domestic economy. If you've got a homogeneous goods, perfect competition, the domestic price will rise up to equal the world, the world price. There's a, a domestic firm would not be willing to sell to domestic consumers if the price were anything below the, uh, the world price. If you had heterogeneous goods, differentiated goods, less than perfect competition, the price will still go up because the opportunities for um, sales abroad are going to put pressure on the domestic consumers who now have to essentially compete with international consumers who are willing to pay a higher price. But in the simple perfect competition, homogeneous goods case, the price fully reflects the opportunities abroad. And as these prices go up, the domestic firms will decide to make more of this product. For example, to go from quantity Q0, the autarky quantity, to Q2, where the price meets the, the domestic supply curve. But there's also a downside. The increase in price it will reduce the amount that domestic consumers will purchase of this good. Foreigners are willing to pay a higher price. Domestic consumers get at least partially priced out of the market. Consumption falling from Q0 to Q1. And the difference between the quantity produced domestically and the quantity consumed domestically, that horizontal distance are the exports. Now you can also sometimes uh, find it more convenient to look at the quantity axis. That blue distance, blue arrow distance there is the same as this one. Both of them reflect the exports of this product into the international market. Now let's take a, uh, let's take a look at uh, producer and consumer surplus. Now I've got the supply and demand curve. I've got the uh, in this case, the world price at P1, the autarky price of P2. And we, we, with the use of all these letters, we can start to analyze some of the different effects on different uh, groups. So let's start with the uh, producer surplus. In autarky, producer surplus is area GH. If that is, seems unfamiliar to you, take a look at the producer surplus uh, video. 
So GH is the payments to fixed factors and economic profit associated with autarky prices of P2. If trade opens up, you've got an analogous producer surplus, a larger triangle, where you have the initial producer surplus plus additional amounts. So B, C, E, F plus G and H. And we can interpret some of these uh, areas uh, as well. B, C, E is the increase in producer surplus for producers who were willing to produce at P2 and produce quantity Q0, who are now able to sell the same amount for a higher price. So producer surplus has that component. The producers are able to get just higher profits because they happen to be in a market where the price went up and for the goods they were going to sell anyway. And area F, which is the increase in producer surplus associated with firms that can profitably expand output. We'll come back to that in a, in a minute. So you have this producer surplus gain of B, C, E, F. The change in the price over to the supply curve, as we've talked about before. But you've also got an effect on consumers. So the producer surplus uh, aspect of this is the good part, and this is what people often think about as being great about exports, that you have uh, new jobs, new production, new profits. But there's also people that are hurt by exports, in particular the consumers of this product, the domestic consumer of this product. In autarky, consumer surplus is that area A, B, C. As a consequence of the higher price, you have a consumer surplus of area A with a consumer surplus loss of B, C. Once again, we can have an interpretation of some of these areas. B is the loss of consumer surplus for consumers that continue to buy this product at a higher price. C is the consumer surplus loss associated with consumers who are priced out of the market, who are no longer willing to buy it at price P1, and that is part of the, um, the downside of, of, uh, of exports. So we've got gains, we've got losses, but we have a net gain of EF. So we're doing this assuming that the any transfer between domestic residents, between a domestic consumer and a domestic producer, have no welfare effects. So we're given equal weight to everybody. And if you do that, then the gain of to, to uh, producers outweighs the losses to consumers. So we have a net gain of EF. Now, once again, you can think about these two uh, uh, areas and give some economic intuition associated with it, which I think is, an, is something that's, that's uh, quite intuitive and, and helpful to, uh, to translate this into the real world. So we've got an increase in production from Q0 to Q2. And we're going to break this up into a couple of uh, components. One we have new export revenue from expanded production. So producers are now producing Q2. They used to produce Q0. If you take that quantity and multiply it times the world price, what you get is export revenue of FLK, that blue box. It took area LK to produce it. The, the, the cost of the total variable cost of, of production is the area under the supply curve. L plus K is the domestic cost of producing that same amount. So what you have, what you're left with is a net benefit from expanded production of F. That's the difference between the export revenue and the cost of the export revenue from expanded production and the 
the cost of making it. So F represents the effects of being able to profitably expand production. But there's a reduction in consumption as well. And the revenue, so this is domestic consumption falls, but you take that amount and you sell it to foreigners. How much revenue do they get? It's going to be price times quantity. So the revenue that you get from selling the same amount of stuff abroad that you used to sell domestically is price times quantity, the world price multiplied times the quantity, CEHJ. That's the revenue you get from selling it abroad. Domestic consumers valued that, the total value that they got, uh, received from that, the total benefit that they received from that was the area under the demand curve. That's how much domestic consumers valued it. So what you're essentially doing is selling this amount to consumers who are willing to pay more. And that results in a benefit to producers from selling to foreigners who are willing to pay more than the domestic residents valued this product. Now, I want to make clear about one thing here that the, the consumers that are depicted here may be final consumers. Say, if you were exporting cattle or beef from Argentina, so the farmers would be the producers and the Argentinian final consumers would be the ones who are buying this, uh, this product. But the consumers can also be of a, uh, a, an industrial user of a good. We're going to have a reading about liquefied natural gas exports from the U.S. where the producers are going to be uh, natural gas companies and the consumers in that case are going to be, um, say, chemical producers who use natural gas as an intermediate input. I mention this because the distinction between consumers and producers is sometimes misunderstood by students. The consumers of a particular product can be people that actually work in an industry using the input as a, uh, the product as an intermediate input. So don't think of this as final consumers versus producers. It's, it can, um, we can use this in a number of different contexts. So in summary, one of the downsides from exporting is that the, the domestic price of the product can tend to rise. Foreigners are willing to pay a higher price than the domestic consumers. And so these opportunities to sell abroad cause gains to some, losses to others. Exporters, exporting producers will gain. They'll be able to uh, sells more abroad profitably and domestic consumers of this product are hurt because they have to compete with these foreigners who are willing to pay a higher price. You've got gains to producers outweighing the losses to consumers. A common theme throughout this course, you change a, a price, you change a trade policy, it's often going to result in winners and losers. The question ultimately is whether the total gains outweigh the total losses. And we will analyze that in some of the export intervention videos later.